Hi there, I'm Robin Zander, and welcome back to Snafu, a weekly series about mistakes and habits, learning and change. Today, I'm really excited to talk about habits for celebrating and for gratitude. It's Thanksgiving week, and so it seemed an appropriate time to compile a lot of the tools that I've seen work over the last decade to practice gratitude and to practice celebration. Throughout my life, I've believed that it's necessary to solve an internal problem, that you have to get through the hard thing in order to celebrate the good thing. But I've realized just in the last couple of years that it's often more effective just to focus on your strengths or what feels good or what went well today. Shut off to the side a lot of the negative because you make the positive bigger and you don't then have to spend as much time trying to dig through the challenge of what's been going poorly. Instead of waiting for things to go right, it's often a lot more effective and it's a hell of a lot more fun to focus on the things that are already going well and to amplify them. First tool is to celebrate the small things. By celebrating the small things that are already going well, no matter how small they are, you get more practice with celebrating and with noticing all of the things in your life that are already going well. You do not need to wait for things to go perfectly in order to celebrate. Practice, and you'll be surprised at how good you feel about the seemingly mundane things that are actually going well in your life. Habit to try is first thing in the morning, write down something from the day before that went well. The second tool that I recommend is what I call flipping judgments. I have a daily practice with my best friend. One of us will call the other on the phone and ask if the other person has any judgments that they would like to flip. And what this means is taking a judgment, a good, bad, right, wrong, something about ourselves or the world around us that we're judging and looking for the positive in that same quote unquote negative situation. If I'm berating myself for a misunderstanding with my mother, I might look for what in that same situation do I have to be grateful for. If I'm judging myself for pushing through an injury, I'm gonna look for what in that injury is gonna help me long-term recover and develop an even more robust physical practice. By taking something that you judge and looking for the positive in that same example, you're flipping the judgment and you're practicing a level of mental and emotional dexterity of flexibility that is really impactful and very positive. Start small. Select something about yourself or somebody else that you're judging as bad. Take a couple of minutes to write down that judgment and then write a few sentences about what in that specific situation could hypothetically be positive. The third practice that I recommend you try is called fear setting. This idea was popularized by Tim Ferriss. He gave a TED talk called Fear Setting, which you should definitely check out. The purpose of this exercise is to identify the worst case scenarios, the things that we're afraid of and maybe even so afraid that we're not looking at of what could go wrong here. My worst case scenario is that I shit my pants and have to leave the country. But even that hypothetical worst case scenario usually results in me learning something from the experience. For extra credit, you can also explore the best case scenario. What might happen if things go perfectly well? When you're considering trying something you're scared of, ask yourself the question, what's the worst case scenario? And write down a few of your answers. You might be surprised by what comes up. The next practice that I recommend trying is called What Went Well. This is a practice that was created by Marty Seligman, Martin Seligman, the founder of Positive Psychology. Most of the history of research psychology is focused on abnormal psychology or problem situations that psych is looking to rectify. And about 30 years ago, Martin Seligman recognized this, saw this pattern and said, wait a minute, what if we study quote unquote healthy normals and look for how do we improve lives for the rest of us? In his book, Flourish, which I recommend you check out, he outlines a what went well exercise which is literally every day just writing out three things that went well the day before. By recognizing three things that went well, you highlight them, accentuate them, make them bigger, and get better at recognizing them as they happen and afterwards. A habit is very simple. Just write down three things that went well for you the day before. The next practice that I recommend is to feel shine. Shine is a term coined by Professor BJ Fogg in his book, Tiny Habits, to describe that internal sensation that we give ourselves when we've done something really well. We natively experience that positive emotion, having accomplished something that we are proud of. But you can also intentionally feel shine, feel pride, feel celebration as a mechanism for reinforcing behaviors you want. 
So if I want to pick up this iPad, I can pick it up and then feel really good that I picked it up and then pick it up again and feel really good that I picked it up again. That's a very silly example. But any behavior that you want to reinforce, you can actively reinforce by engaging in the behavior and then feeling really good about yourself, just psyching yourself up. So a pat on the back, a fist pump, smiling at yourself in the mirror, anything that makes you feel good inside. The practice that I recommend here is to deliberately feel good about something that you've done today, some habit, some behavior that you want to reinforce. This could be a fist pump, this could be a pat on the back, or this could be a smile in the mirror, just the acknowledgement that you've done something well. The next practice that I recommend is seeking out awe. I was sitting in the sauna the other week and I happened to strike up a conversation with a UC Berkeley professor named Datcher Keltney, who has spent his career studying awe. There have been a couple of moments in my life where awe has fundamentally changed the whole trajectory of my life, one of which occurred at 17 years old. I had recently picked up gymnastics and my parents took me to see Cirque du Soleil's show Alegria. And watching what the acrobats were capable of on that stage, watching their backflips and this spectacle of a circus it was my first time seeing a circus. I completely expanded my worldview. I had a completely new perspective of what the human body was capable of. And that moment of awe led to the last 20 years of my very robust movement and physical practice. Awe has the capacity to fundamentally change our worldview and our perspective. The habit that I recommend here is to seek out experiences that create awe. This could be a, a beautiful vista. This could be listening to some of your favorite music. This could be recognizing and acknowledging a close and personal relationship in your life. But look for that experience of awe in a, in a small way. Try and cultivate it, try and welcome it because as you become more available to the experience of awe, you're more likely to experience it again. As I record this, we're just past Thanksgiving and going into the midwinter holidays. I hope one of these tools is useful for you as you spend time with friends and family or go about your life. Until next time, thank you very much.